as we check the grid. And for the third time in two years in a row, John Bow starts from pole alongside his teammate Dick Johnson, and it's great to see Dick up there. Tony Longhurst, a great qualifying effort by him. He shares the second row with Jason Bright. Out of row three, Russell Engel and Larry Perkins, the Castrol Joe and the Commodores, John Faulkner and Mark Larkham in the Mitre 10 Ford out of line four. We then go back to Glenn Seaton and Craig Lowndes. Unusual to see those guys back there. Paul Romano put in a blitz and he got up to 11 ahead of Mark Scaife. Stephen Richards and Stephen Ellery out of 13 and 14, 15 and 16. Alan Jones making his comeback in the brand new Komatsu Falcon and Darren Pate in the Wins Commodore. We go back to position 17, Jason Barguana, who unfortunately was a little bit crook yesterday due to the heat. He starts alongside Terry Finnegan, Darren Hossack and Thomas Mazira, who is the top privateer. Plenty of cars here, Greg Crick and John Briggs, the privateers. Trevor Ashby had a crash in qualifying, but he's back for action today. And Kevin Heffern in the Price Attack Commodore. Plenty of cars, all right. It's a maximum grid of 29 here today. Ryan McLeod and the youngster, Paul Wheel, Danny Osborne and Rod Nash. And starting off position 29, Karen Brewer in the Castrol Cougador. Well, pretty important position. Have a look at the big crowd here at Lakeside. That's the shot from up on 4X Hill, looking down towards the start line. It is a chock-a-block grid. Oh, these Queenslanders love their motorsport, don't they? They always come out and support at Lakeside Raceway when the big V8s come to Queensland. And no shortage of fans here too. Despite these blistering conditions, we're expecting temperatures 33, 34 degrees, which apparently is going to give a track temperature approaching 60 degrees centigrade, which is phenomenally hard on the tyres. And how about the drivers? I mean, oh. it's just these things are the hottest cars in the world to drive. Watch this first corner. They go through the kink and watch them going into the right-hander because if everybody gets through there scot-free, it'll be a miracle with a grid this size. Well, apparently the word uh, we got, I was in the Gary Rogers garage earlier this morning and they said, poor old Bargs, Jason Barguana, it was actually physically sick from heat stroke yesterday. We get ready, the green flag is at the back. This is the third round, the opening race of the Shell Australian Touring Car Championship from Lakeside in Queensland. We're set to go. We are away. Jump. Longhurst got away all right, but it's John Bow who got the jump. Ingle tried to force the way up the outside. They all get away cleanly for the moment. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. Jason Bright's on the uh, on the outside there. And yes, he manages to get through. Looked like it was Dick Johnson who got the jump there as they come through the carousel. So it is Dickie. The local crowd are going to go crazy. Oh, boy, he's pumped up. Oh, oh a bit of a contact there. The wind's Commodores just getting back onto the line as they sweep through here under the Dunlop Bridge for this very fast part of the track, 220 kilometres an hour as they break hard for Hungry Corner. So it's the Shell duo, Dick Johnson in the brand new Shell 17 Ford making its debut this weekend at Lakeside. John Bauer, the pole man in behind him, and Tony Longhurst in the Castrol Ford. Well, it's been a long, long time before uh, between drinks since we've seen Dick at the front of this V8 supercar field. He started from pole here back in 95, and he would be loving this. The new car is worth everything they've paid for it. Have a look at it, go. I reckon the man you've got to watch today is Russell Engel. He's sitting in there fourth position in the first of the Castrol Commodores. Heavy mind, he started from a long way further back than that last year and ended up winning the final heat. Here's a man on a mission and he's in fourth position right behind that leading pack of Fords. I tell you what, it's going to be interesting to see how much restraint Craig Lowndes and Mark Scaife uh, can use because they qualified very badly. They changed the car substantially or the geometry on the rear suspension of that and they found found almost half a second uh, in um, the earlier practice. Here's a replay of Glenn Seaton going off, spinning at Hungry Corner. Now contact between he and Paul Romano. They spin in unison there. And Ellery avoids them, so too does Jones and Finnegan. Well done by those three guys. Bad luck for Glenn Seaton. He didn't qualify well and his nightmare continues. Now here's John Briggs going sideways. That looks like heading up into the Eastern Loop. So he's spinning. And Crick goes through, Ellery goes through. So Ellery avoided two incidents oh, in two corners. Heffernan, that is there. Wow. Well, they're very lucky to thread that needle. Saw a major carnage last year at this round. So managed, looks like everyone's managed to get through pretty unscathed. Dick Johnson, though, continues to lead the pack. A 52-4-2. His first lap around, John Bauer tucked in behind the boss. But Tony Longhurst now starting to feel plenty of heat from Russell Ingle. You can see how hard he's working that Castrol Commodore. Tail gets a little bit sideways as he comes down and drops into Hungry Corner. Well, the last time Dick Johnson won a race here at Lakeside was round one in 1994, so it has been a long time between drinks. He's going great out in front at the moment. The first of the Yokohama runners we look at through the windscreen of Russell Engel. That is Tony Longhurst in the Castrol Ford ahead of the Castrol Commodore of Russell Engel. We've got vision here from the Sidcron Proto in-car camera. So we head down, we're hitting up close to 250 through the kink. 
Obviously, Longhurst there covering uh, covering the inside. I was talking to Tony earlier on, and he was saying that uh, the Yokohama tyres uh, are really getting better and better, but uh, Dunlop oh. is definitely the flavour of the day, and Russell Lee was getting awful close there. Larry Perkins back there in fifth position from Jason Bright, John Faulkner. Lowndes has come from tenth up into eighth from Skate and Larkham rounding out the top ten at the moment. There's only a few tenths of a second between these two competitors after qualifying yesterday. Russell very quick in the warm-up this morning. Probably got the setup right on the car and he looks like he's trying to find a way past Longhurst. It's going to be very, very tough around here. Lakeside's not a very wide track. Very high average smooth, a lot of flowing corners. You have to take a real deep breath if you're going to try and get one of these cars under brakes, particularly when you consider how close they are in performance. Here's your Shell Helix race score. Johnson, Bow, Longhurst, Ingle and Perkins. Now the last lap around, the front two runners. That's Dick Johnson and John Bow lapping in the 51. So too is Larry Perkins. So keep your eye on Larry as we watch the battle for third and fourth. Longhurst and Ingle. Ingle coming off a seven race winning streak. The last two years at the Australian Grand Prix support race, he's in great form at the moment. And getting very impatient by the look of it. Well, they're really pushing it here, consider considering the temperatures, the very high temperatures of Lakeside today. Official lap records of 51.44 set last year by Seaton. And Dick Johnson sits on a 51.7, so they're really pushing hard under these hot conditions and these opening laps. It's going to be just to see if these tyres can hang in for the journey. Now, I just got a quick glimpse from our commentary box of the safety Ooh, car on the track, and that's the reason why Greg Crick, he is over the other side of the fence. Let's hope that he's OK. He's gone in really hard there. Greg yeah. Crick just taking the helmet off now. Oh, Heffernan's Heffernan. involved as well. A bit of coming together through the back part of the circuit. Crick, he's OK. He's on his feet. But you can see by the deformation in the Armco fence there, he's given that a real wallop. That was a good thump for sure. Look at him. Incredible. Well, Greg Crick was our top privateer from Simmons Plains in Tasmania. He isn't going to be that today, that's for sure. Race one has started disastrously for him. There's the safety car you can see on the circuit. The action continues, though. It is Dick Johnson who leads the way quite convincingly over his teammate John Bow from Tony Longhurst, Ingle, Perkins, Bright, Faulkner. Scape has overtaken Lowndes now. Lowndes pushed back tonight, but Larkin remains in 10th. It's great to be calling the number 17 machine in the lead for once, for a change. What a fabulous car it is too. It's the eighth Falcon to come from the Shell stable. Engineer Peter Turk, Murray Bunn, the new engineer brought in this year, or certainly last year, to uh, help with some technical input when the Shell team were chasing some chassis imbalance. And Dick says this thing is an absolute jet. He's actually had to modify his driving yeah. style a little bit because the chassis is apparently 30% stiffer in torsional rigidity and it's made such a difference to the game. What's oh, happening here? Jason Bryant. Well, there's a bit of confusion, I think, as to what's going out on the track because Ingle is slowing down. No, well, that's, Perkins that's is slowing Perkins. down. And Longhurst is continuing on, but we haven't seen any flags, Sean. So, whether well, there's some confusion amongst the drivers, they're all bunching up now. It seems strange if that safety car's out on the circuit. I would have thought that... Caution uh, flags are there. Yeah, well, you would Obviously. naturally assume so, but I uh, can't see any as yet. Back to racing now, but yeah, there was some confusion there. But watch them as the next time they come around. Russell Ingle is definitely not backing off at this part of the circuit at least. As if they come through a caution period of the back there where Pitch car is and the safety car was. On board with Russell Ingle. Sid Crone Proto on board camera takes you right to the heart of the action. He's right up behind Longhurst as they come under the bridge this time. So the order now, Johnson, Bow, Longhurst and Ingle. This is the battle for third and fourth. Oh, Ingle up the inside. Got him. Well, you can see a green flag there. They're back to full racing condition. So there must have been some confusion last time around. Larry Perkins as well. Now. Takes Ooh. advantage. Round the outside of the Castrol Falcon. So it's the Castrol Super Team swapping positions. Nice work there by Larry Perkins and Russell Ingle. They've moved up some positions and a well placed. So Ingle up to third now. Perkins fourth. Longhurst back to fifth. And have a look at this freight train. Bright's in there. So too Faulkner. He's excited about being where he is. Then we've got the two mobile HRT cars ahead of Larkham. Then the two Valvoline cars of Richards. Barguana and Alan Jones at the back of that pack. Well, Russell Ingle said he's the man to watch. He's got a five second gap now between that leading Shell duo. Boy, those guys are really piling on the pressure. A 51-9 for Johnson that time around. His fastest lap at 51.7 on lap four. So he's really piling on the pressure, getting plenty of speed out of 17. It looks like it's carrying that speed as the race continues. Well, there's our two guys that sit at the top of the temp and championship table, Craig Lowndes and Mark Scape. And I know that Mark was very disappointed about qualifying 12th 
he wasn't happy at all, but he's trying to make amends now. Some adjustments overnight. They were fourth and sixth quickest in the warm-up before this race, so they had improved to the extent of something like half a second overnight. So HRT are back on track. When you look at the cars yesterday, they were all over the show. They looked so soft, the setup of it. And I was talking to Jeff Gregg. Talking to Jeff Gregg, and it was the actual geometry of the back end of it, not so much the, uh, the spring end, but they look so soft and sloppy. <laughs> well, Craig Lowndes is getting a hurry along as well, isn't he? Oh! That's one of the Valvoline cars, Jason Bargwana or Stephen Richards. Stevie Richards. So Stephen Ellery makes his way past Richards, getting back onto the circuit. That's cost him plenty of time. The order, Johnson, Bauer, Ingle, Perkins, Longhurst. Here's John Faulkner. Running back in seventh position. The quickest two cars out on the circuit at the moment of the cash roll oh, Commodore Scapey. Scapey. He's gone. So you can see a real battle going on there between Lowndes and Scapey. It would be terrible if those two took each other out. Extremely hot conditions outside and obviously inside these V8 supercars. Johnson's leading his teammate who we ride with now, John Bow, onto the main straight lap 13 of 23. And Johnson looks very comfortable. Well, it looks like Dunlop uh, have been doing their homework on the tyre situation. This is the same tyre, the Dunlop 356. They ran at the Australian Grand Prix meeting, a non-championship round for the V8s, but Russell Engel and the Dunlop cars look very, very dominant under, under those conditions. So the tyre seems to be working particularly well at Lakeside here this afternoon. I tell you who is going well. He's uh, Alan Jones is up to ninth place now. He qualified really badly. 15. And um, that's, no, that's not bad going. So he's right behind uh, Lounge. Tell you what's happening though, the gap you've got to watch is Russell Ingle. He's in third position, he's brought it down to 2.6 seconds. The gap between him and the Shell duo leading the race. So Ingle on an absolute charge of 51 6 8 last time around. He's clipped a few tenths out of the Shell team, so he could be right on the oh, back. Hang on, we're going in trouble here. Castrol car. Karen Brewer. By the looks of it, could be. Yes, yeah. it's yes. Karen Brewer. That Mark talking about that time of Russell Ingalls, he's just two tenths of a second off Glenn Seaton's existing lap record. So that's how quick Russell Ingle is going at the moment. Brewer gets back on the track just in front of AJ. Oh, AJ won't be pleased about that. We get back to it. Here is the battle between Tony Longhurst and Jason Bright, the two Queensland Ford drivers. This is the battle for fifth and sixth at the moment. So the order now, Johnson and Bauer, they're 2.3 seconds up the road from Ingle. Perkins a further 1.4 seconds back. And here's the battle for fifth and sixth. Longhurst and Bright, the two Queensland Fords. Tony's been very happy with the performance of his car through the two days of practice and qualifying. Well, Jason Bright, hasn't he adapted well to the V8 supercar format and formula? The existing Australian Formula Holden champion. He stepped up to V8s and he's handled it very well. In fact, he sits in the top 10 in terms of the championship points. Well, he does, but uh, it, the Australian Grand Prix didn't manage to see. He hasn't had a lot of luck, really, when you think about it. You know, people say, oh, he's been going mad, but he hasn't. You know, he, he just hasn't had the luck. And at least today, so far, so good. This is the car he, he's driving that uh, Mark Larkin crashed at Phillip Island last year. As we look back at Alan Jones and Jason Barguana, Terry Finnegan, Darren Hossack, who's doing really well in the Wins Commodore, ahead of Stephen Ellery in the Holden Young Lions entry. Stevie Richards clawing his way back. Top privateer Thomas Mazira making his way through. It's quite an impressive lap from Alan Jones, considering this is the first race for the Komatsu Falcon, running Yokohama tyres out of the Tony Longhurst stable. He's just done a... 52, a low 52. That's matching the speed of yeah, uh, Dick Johnson last time that. around. So AJ's really getting on with it. He's up to ninth position and making good progress. We're back with John Bauer, our pole position man, sitting in behind the boss. And it's half a second, just hovering around behind Dick Johnson. I don't think there's any team orders here, but I know Bauer would really like the boss to do well in his own backyard. Well, for those people who have been uh, giving Dick a hard time, I guess this is the best way to answer it, isn't it? Absolutely, no other way. Saying he's too old and he's lost it, I guess he's uh, proving them wrong at the moment. There was uh, a chance that, that uh, Dick's son, Stephen, was going to be a third member in the Shell Helix Falcon team, but uh, he couldn't make it to the track this week in some circumstances, uh, stopping him from being that third member. So keep your eyes out and see if Stephen does make it into the V8s this year. He is... Uh, Rumoured to be driving with Dick at Bathurst this year, and congratulations to young Cameron McConville, who's just signed with the Shell team for the endurance races. Oh, Ingle. Ingle's kept, he keeps grinding away. It's under two seconds now. There he is, just appearing in frame. 1.6, 1.3 now. 
So he's really taking a big chomp out of this lead. He's getting very close to the Falcon duo. There he is, Russell Ingall, with his team boss, Larry Perkins, behind him. Tony Longhurst and the Falcon back in fifth. So Ingall can sniff a victory here. Pushing really hard. Look at the Shell team squeezing through just on the inside of the OAMS Falcon of Ryan McLeod. That's going to help Russell Engel because Bow got held up there in the hungry corner. Yeah. Now Engel needs to get a clean run through past Ryan McLeod. It's always exciting when Engel's on a charge, isn't it? Watch this telemetry provided by Triple M on board John Bow's Shell 18 Ford. You can see on the right hand side of your screen revolutions per minute of that engine and road speed on the left. Let's have a listen to the Shell car. application so every time John's on and off that middle pedal that red light's flashing on. Have a look up ahead here guys they're coming up on three cars this is going to make it interesting this could help Ingle out big time there are just four laps remaining in the opening race and Russell Ingle is on the charge trying to catch the two shell Fords and you see Dick and John Bow there they've just put their headlights on to let these drivers know let us through fellas I think it's Darren Pate they're coming up on I saw Paul Wheel in that pack as well and also Danny Osborne. Okay it's just over a second between Russell Ingle John Bow. That's on board with DJ now. Dick Johnson now is hitting this traffic. Goes oh, up yeah. the inside of the Winds Commodore. Try and pick his way through quickly here. This car's travelling in excess of 200 kilometres an hour through this very narrow part of the track. Danny Osborne and the Colour Scan Falcon gives him racing room. Johnson down the outside. Bow goes with him. Up through Hungry Corner. They've got the trade in Falcon. A Paul wheel ahead of them. And now Russell Engel's going to have to contend with this too. This could be a critical move in the race. Well, here's, uh, here's an interesting duo. Probably the least experienced and the most experienced together. Paul Wheel, oh. just 18 years of age. You need oh. to get out of the way, Paul. He's coming on. Oh, oh no! Both! Oh. Almost! Danny Osborne spun, trying to keep away, but didn't know where that trade link forward was going. Goodness me, now Johnson. It's touched. And Johnson, you can see there, we made contact with the Falcon. So Bowes now in front with three laps to go. Dick Johnson, the damage on the front left of the uh, Shell Helix Ford there. And that has allowed Russell Ingle to catch right up. So we've got a three-car race right now. Can you believe the confusion there? Paul Will trying to wave Johnson through. Everyone was in two minds. Contact between the cars. Oh, just shows how easily it can happen. Well, there's the Shell Helix leaderboard for the privateers. Thomas Mazira, the main man. Look at the damage in the back of Dick Johnson's car. He's obviously been clouded by someone, perhaps Russell Ingle. Could have been one of the Castrol, yeah. Could be one of the Castrol holds getting caught up in that too. They're going very, very quickly out of that corner. It's something like 160 kilometres an hour as they come onto the main straight. Well, that was really lucky. It didn't develop into a major. Yeah, definitely. There's the damage there. A great shot as they come onto the main straight. We've got just two laps remaining. Oh, look at Ingle. Can Dick Johnson hang on to that second spot and make it a Shell Helix 1-2? <laughs> That's amazing. I was just looking at this car in the garage yesterday and commenting to Dick how close the tyre set to the mudguard. And now you can really see that tolerance has been taken up with that little bit. Sid Chrome, Proto onboard camera, takes you on with Russell Engel. This is the battle for the lead. First, second, third and fourth all in one high-speed freight train. Can Engel find his way through before this race is finished? Well, he was I, very determined in the beginning. Yeah, I, and I can honestly say that DJ's going to be really determined that he's not going to get past. Yeah, so, for sure. You know, I can't see, uh, you know, with Dick's experience, he's going to stick that thing in all the right places at the wrong time for him. Well, as we saw, you hit that lap traffic and anything could happen. Well, that's disappointing for Dick Johnson that he's, uh, it doesn't look like it at this stage that he's going to pick up a win, but this will be a repeat of race two last year here at Lakeside. The final lap as we take the high shot from our cherry picker. One more lap to go around the Lakeside circuit. This will be a repeat of last year's second race where JB took the win from Dick Johnson. Ingle's going to do everything in his power to try and get past one last lap. Actually, just looking at that slight bit of damage on the front of Bowers' car, it could have been Bowers who hit Johnson up the back because he was so close behind him and Dick hit uh, Paul Wheel. There you can see that. A bit of battle damage on Bowers' car. So they've regathered themselves after that incident. Fortunately, only with light damage, could have been disastrous. Russell Engel really close now behind Johnson. Last time up through the Eastern Loop. 
Coming up on Rod Nash there, one of the newcomers to the V8 supercar ranks. He gets right out of the way really quickly. They come down off the eastern loop for the final time. It is going to be a Shell Ford 1-2. Congratulations to that team. John Bow, who won the round here last year, starts the day in great fashion. Ingle pulls out of the slipstream, but he won't get there. Dick Johnson in for second from Russell Ingle. Larry Perkins in for fourth. And it should still be Tony Longhurst in fifth position. But there is the man who takes the win. Uh, maybe he uh, might not have wanted it to happen that way. He might, might like to see Dick get a win. But uh, nonetheless, a 1-2 for Shell Hill and team. Yeah, well, Dick Johnson will be pretty disappointed too. You can see that confusion with Paul Wheel. Unfortunately, made contact. There's nothing deliberate there. It was just Wheel trying to wave Dick through. He must have had his... Maybe his car positioned in the wrong place. Not enough room for Johnson. As we've said, fortunately, nothing uh, major, well, ma more major than what it was, came out of it. There they go. Yeah, JB says, well, well I don't well, know. What Sorry, happened mate. there? Oh, look at that. That, that was JB that hit him up the bum. Yeah, it was right in behind Oh, Johnson. look at the back. Look, look, look. look. Now, Danny, Danny Osborne just spun the car to try and stay away yeah, from that. He did a good job, nice work. Go. So it was a bit of a sacrifice on his behalf. He good did a good job, though. He sure did. Avoided T-boning the side of the Trade Link Falcon. And you can see that rubbing there to John Bell. Let's have a look at this from another angle now. Bowles right behind his team boss. Contact between Wheel and Johnson. Oh. Boof! <laughs> John Bowles got nowhere to go. And it was so lucky. Oh, it was incredible. That, that could have been a Dick, really... Dick did a good job to hang on to that too. Yeah, because did. He was heading out towards the arm car as we uh, go back on board with John Bow. $250,000 of race car. I they might have focused his attention enormously. Wouldn't want to do that. <laughs> All righty, let's check the final placings on your Shell Helix race score. John Bow in for the win for a Shell 1-2. Dick Johnson in for second. Russell Engel and Larry Perkins, three and four. They'll be happy with that. Tony Longhurst in for fifth. A good, steady finish. Lowndes worked his way from... 10th up into 6th position, Jason Bright in for 7th, Faulkner 8th, Alan Jones a great effort there by AJ from 15th up to 9th and Jason Barguana in 10th. We have a look at 11th, Terry Finnegan well done in the Sony Auto Sound Commodore ahead of Stephen Ellery, Darren Hossack, Stevie Richards and Thomas Mazira in 15th, the top privateer.